Let's go back into the main menu. I can just tap here to bring it up. Uh, see, we've got things like an FM radio, and of course, here's Timescape, Sony Ericsson's application. I, I really dislike Timescape. It's a complex system. Um, it's not all that useful. It's uh, their attempt at pulling in social networking things, and it's just it, not particularly usable. I recommend you take a look at the Xperia X10 video I did if you want to see in depth about Timescape and Mediascape. I'm just not going to spend the time on them here. YouTube support, of course, you know, things like Google Maps. No multi touch support. You have to use the on screen controls. And you'll see the same is true when we go to the browser. Right now I've got the full mobile burn web page pulled up. See it does a very good job of rendering the page. Uh, very accurately done. Oh, I must have tapped on something there. Pulled up a, another story. Zoom out. At its default zoom, um, it's not super clear, but it's definitely readable. Uh, you know, we're, you're paying a bit of a price for this small QVGA resolution display, but in general, it works better than I expected. I'll pull up the foot, uh, the bookmarks right here. I'll go to the uh, mobile formatted version of the site. See nice smooth scrolling from the uh, 600 megahertz Qualcomm processor, and again works in portrait and landscape mode. Connected to a Wi-Fi network right now. So you can see there's the default zoom level, and it's readable. It's uh, it's not the smoothest you're going to see. Um, you know, it definitely can't compete with high-res, wide VGA displays. But all things considered, it's working pretty well, and you definitely have the benefit of having a very small, pocketable device that doesn't take up a lot of space. I'm going to activate the camera by pressing the shutter button, and it's a really nice. 5 megapixel autofocus camera in this device. Uh, you can see I just pressed the shutter button a little bit to focus. It focuses nice and quickly. Great user interface for changing settings. Uh, very easy to switch back and forth you know, between macro and regular mode, night mode and stuff. Really quite pleased with it. Uh, flash settings. Just tap on it and it shows you what's going on. Take a quick picture. Press the shutter button again to get back. Switch to video mode. And let's poke around and see what we've got. I don't know what that setting means. Oh, it's turning the flash on and off. And we're now recording a quick video clip. I'll stop it now and we'll play it back. jump into the gallery so we can take a look at it. And we're now recording a quick video clip. I'll stop it now and we'll play it back. You see it took a little while for the video to start. Now I have to tell you that we're using a pre-production device just like when Sony Ericsson sent us the uh, original Xperia X10 this Mini Pro and the Mini are both running pre-production firmware so uh, we can't really do a complete review on it and anything you see wrong with it could be fixed by the time it hits the market so hard to say um, but that is a little odd we can go through the gallery a bit again no double tapping oh there we go double tapping but no multi-touch gestures Pretty nicely done. And again, the corner is used for common functions, which makes it really easy to navigate. Jump back to the home screen here and I'll show you some of the customization options. We'll go through and um, choose a new wallpaper. Pick this one here. Arrange the widgets. Let's 
pick the data traffic one just to see what it is. We'll add another widget. RoadSync Calendar would be an exchange client. Looks like we don't have options for a media scape application, just timescape on these smaller X10 mini devices. We'll hit the back arrow. Allows us to quickly turn on or disable data. Not much in terms of uh, customization. You can't move widgets around. You're not going to really be able to make a nice home screen the way you could on many other devices, but with a QVGA resolution, you didn't really have much options anyway. Let's jump into the Gmail application and take a quick look at it. A bunch of Facebook requests. Uh, one test message here I sent, just so you can see it properly supports formatted text. If you long press the home button here, it will bring up a list of other applications so you can quickly jump back and forth from one to the other. Pull up the email client. You can see we've got three new messages in the inbox. Again, formatted text just like we saw before. Very few controls though, like if I wanted to mark this message unread, there doesn't seem to be an option. The menu doesn't bring up anything. When I go back to the inbox and long hold on the message, I still don't get any other options for forwarding or things like that. And I know I said I wasn't going to go into Timescape, but what the heck. So here's Timescape. I can show you what I don't like about it. Right off the bat, yeah, the fact that the you know the um, avatar for the account shows up as the background is an immediate problem. Uh, white text on white just really doesn't work that well. You can't read that easily. Uh, it does smoothly scroll, but it, it's not easy to read. You know, you have to very carefully move from one to the next, try to make out what the text is, and it's just it's not a good system. I like my friend Brandon there. We'll tap on one just so we can see what's going on. It's going to pull up into the web page which I find to be absurd that it has to load the um, Twitter web page in order to see the full tweet I just really don't like the application Let's see what some of the other things here we can post a new status update link it to an existing contact is what we're showing. Messaging and everything else would get integrated into Timescape as well. Seems to be simpler than the version on the X10 though, and of course this reloads everything, starts a new update. In a nutshell, that's everything you need to know about uh, Timescape. Uh, you should be looking at dedicated clients from Facebook like this one here, or Twidroid for example for uh, Twitter or even the official Twitter application. There's a lot of better ways to do social networking on one of these devices. In spite of the fact that I really disliked the original Sony Ericsson Xperia X10, I am quite fond of the X10 Mini and Mini Pro, especially the Mini Pro with that um, very good keyboard. Both devices have uh, a nice look to them. Uh, Sony Ericsson's done a good job on the user interface, making it easy to use on a small 2.5 inch display. And even the QVGA resolution hasn't proven itself to be that much of a difficulty. Uh, things look pretty good on it. Uh, the good hardware design, uh, the camera's quite nice and very very small pocketable devices both of them have very very slick little phones so again that's the Sony Ericsson Xperia X10 Mini and the Mini Pro I'm Michael Oral for MobileBurn.com